Greetings to you in the name of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Yesterday I uh, spoke about uh, keeping uh, God's commands. Now uh, hearing and knowing God's commands are not enough. We must demonstrate our love for God, for Jesus, by obeying what He commands us, by putting into practice what we hear. A story is told of a Christian family, a good uh, Christian family. They were regular worshippers. The whole family uh, used to attend a uh, service uh, every Sunday without fail. But somewhere along uh, the track, the uh, mother-in-law and uh, daughter-in-law could never get along. They never got along. So much so, uh, the doctor not just uh, stopped visiting her uh, in laws, uh, and uh, the mother in law just refused to visit her son's uh, family. It was going on for some time. And uh, during uh, one uh, Sunday uh, service, there was a guest speaker. And he spoke about God's love. And how we should love one another. It was a very powerful uh, message. And the, both the mother-in-law and daughter-in-law, they were listening to the message. And uh, during uh, the service, the time came for sharing uh, the peace. So the, uh, the daughter-in-law was surprised. She was totally surprised to see her mother-in-law walking towards her. Usually, uh, they will try to avoid each other. They will try to avoid. But then on that Sunday, uh, after the message, the mother-in-law walked towards the daughter-in-law. And the daughter-in-law saw that a mother there was tears rolling down from a mother-in-law's eyes. She came up, uh, she went to the daughter-in-law, hugged her, and said her uh, how sorry she was for the way that uh, she had treated her. Her. And the daughter-in-law, upon hearing what the mother-in-law said, she also broke down and she said, uh, Auntie, I'm so sorry. I should not have treated the way that I had treated you. And uh, the daughter-in-law uh, went on to say, you know, Auntie, we have been uh, good Christians. The mother-in-law looked at her. The mother-in-law thought her, <laughs> The daughter-in-law was trying to be sarcastic, but the daughter-in-law went on to say, you know, we had been a good Christians uh, in the church. We have been uh, smiling and uh, worshipping God. But then, the minute that uh, we left the church, we left our faith inside the four walls of the church building. Auntie, let us take our faith outside 
the church building. Auntie, I, you don't have to say sorry to me. I must say sorry to you. And from that day on, uh, the relationship uh, changed. I've heard uh, many stories like that. In my years of ministry, I've experienced incidents uh, like that. Now, in uh, the gospel lesson for yesterday, taken from uh, Mark chapter 7, Jesus uh, in reply to the Pharisees. The Pharisees were accusing Jesus for not uh, keeping the traditions of the other elders. They saw, they saw the disciples of Jesus did not wash their hands. Fortunately, not today. <laughs> because today even our children, they know the importance of uh, washing their hands, using the, the sanitizer. But of course, uh, there was no uh, coronavirus during the time of Jesus. So the disciples, uh, they went about eating without washing their hands. Most probably not in the way that uh, they were supposed to wash. They had their own uh, way of washing. So uh, the Pharisees uh, accused the disciples of Jesus for not keeping the tradition. In other words, they were accusing Jesus for not teaching the disciples to follow the traditions of the uh, elders. In response uh, to them, Jesus says, uh, he quotes uh, Isaiah 29. In uh, Mark 7, uh, verse 6 and 7, uh, I read for you before we uh, refer to Isaiah 29. He replied, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you, hypocrites. He looks at the Pharisees and says, you hypocrites. And a lot of us behave like hypocrites. A lot of people behave like hypocrites. As it is written, these people honor me with their lips. Jesus is uh, quoting uh, Isaiah, the prophet. But their hearts are far from me. And their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are but rules taught by men. Please, please turn to uh, Isaiah chapter 29. In Isaiah chapter 29 verse 13, the Lord says, so Isaiah was not expressing his own opinion. Isaiah was, Isaiah recorded what the Lord said. Now we can uh, bluff for one another. We can uh, pretend to be uh, good Christians, sometimes both within and outside the church. Pretending is different from being the person we are. So, the Lord, through Isaiah, said this. These people come near to me with their mouth. These people come near to me with their mouth. Of course, that part is left out in the, uh, Mark chapter 7. These people come near me with their mouth. Yes, a lot of us do that. We uh, come near to God only with our mouth. We come uh, into the presence of God. We offer Him uh, praise. We pray. 
we, we come near to him only with our mouth. Like the story that I shared with you. The mother-in-law was there, the daughter-in-law was there. They were in the same church, worshipping together, saying the Lord's Prayer, Our Father. Yet, in their heart, they had bitterness towards one another. There was an unforgiveness. So with their mouth, they worshipped God. Every Sunday, every Sunday, <clears throat> they worshipped God. So here the Lord says, he looks at the people of Israel and he says, These people come near to me with their mouth. And I believe the Lord says the same thing to some Christians today. Because some of us come to church and worship God only with our mouth. He goes on to say, and honor me with your lips. Honor me with your lips. But their hearts are far from me, said. They come near me with their mouth. They honor me with their lips. Only outwardly. Only outwardly. They were Christians. Or at least they behaved like Christians. But uh, the Lord who knows every secret of our hearts. He looked at the people of Israel and said, Their worship of me. He says that, but their hearts are far from me. And he goes on to say, Their worship of me is made up only of rules taught by me. Their worship of me is only rules taught by me. Now when we come to worship God, we need to uh, search our hearts. We must uh, ask ourselves, uh, is my heart alright before God? Now we can uh, impress uh, others. We can impress uh, all those who are attending the service by the way that we worship God. But God knows our hearts. Are we truly worshipping Him in spirit and in truth? Is the worship that we are offering, is it coming from our heart? Or are we just uh, offering Him a lip service? So when we only offer Him lip service, you can be assured that uh, your worship will not be accepted, accepted by God. Our worship must come from our heart. Which means that uh, when I hear the word of God, like in the story I shared with you, the mother-in-law and daughter-in-law heard the same message. And the word of God pierced right through their hearts. And they did not just go back just uh, being en enriched by the uh, word of God. They decided to obey what the Lord told them on that Sunday. And they decided to demonstrate their love for God by uh, reconciling with one another. And I'm sure on that day, God must have rejoiced. The angels must have rejoiced, seeing the mother-in-law and daughter-in-law hugging each other and saying, forgive. Let us love one another even as Jesus loves us. So, all the previous Sundays, yes, they worship God, but their heart was hardened, with a hatred, bitterness, unforgiveness, 
towards one another. But then on, on that Sunday, they decided to uh, circumcise their heart. They decided to remove all this bitterness, unforgiveness, hatred. And I'm sure, as I said earlier, God, our Father, Jesus our Saviour, Holy Spirit our Teacher, must have rejoiced in sin. His children being reconciled and uh, beginning to worship Him. Not just with their lips, but from their heart. So this is why when we come to church on uh, Sundays, we have the prayer of purity right at the beginning of the service. So that we can uh, cleanse ourselves, not only for the service, but to start up a new beginning. So that after service also we leave the church as a new person. So every time when we attend church service, something must happen to us. There must be some changes. Changes that will uh, bring glory to God. Changes that will uh, be a blessing to us and to others. If after attending church services, we feel we, there's no changes in our life, there's no changes in the way that we relate with our others, then our service, our worship, our honoring of God was only with our lips. We may have come near to God with our mouth, but our hearts are far from Him. So let us not be uh, like the Pharisees to whom Jesus uh, quoted our Isaiah, who are more interested in holding the traditions than uh, in worshipping God in spirit and in truth. Once again, the choice is yours. You can uh, stay on uh, worshipping God the way that you have been worshipping, or ask God the Holy Spirit to shine uh, the light. And there are, if there are areas that, need con that you need to confess, confess them, and put your life right before God. God bless you. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.